Okay, hello everyone. This video will mainly be dedicated. This video will mainly be dedicated in showing how I play each hunter. So do try to enjoy this for a little bit, even if it's just for a short time. Um, now then, let's see. I'm playing wax artists for this one, so I'm gonna play hunters that I don't usually play. Basically, everyone except sculptor. Now then, when you spawn in this direction, usually the survivors are behind the two-story. And here, I managed to find barmaid just by listening to her drinking. I think, or even she she clinked her she clinked her uh, glasses. I don't know why. To be fair, now then, getting a normal hit right there. It seems like barmaid actually here doesn't have palace speed boost or window speed boost. What that what that means is that barmaid has flywheel, right? So like. I'll just pause it. I'll just... No, you know what? I won't even pause it here. So, like, in this case scenario, you should not be breaking the pallet. As a wax artist, mate, you most likely should be just spewing wax regardless of what happens. Now, here, as you can see, there is a priestess giving a long portal towards the psychologist. We can just immediately lock the cipher with the blob of wax. Break that and keep a look on the ciphers. Keep a look on the ciphers and psycho is right there as well right so you see here i'm gonna pause it here psycho psycho is currently here and i am not too far away from psycho right this is like probably five seconds walking distance and in this area as well in this area as well let's be honest it's really easy to land your wax it's really easy to land your wax on the psychologist here why? Because the merry-go-round here doesn't really block too much wax. If Psycho goes in here, you can keep spewing wax. If Psycho goes between this pallet... Okay, let me just delete that. If Psycho goes in between this pallet or this pallet, you can just spew wax. Uh, the only place where Psycho could hide potentially is behind this pallet. You can't really hide behind this pallet that well because there's a window here in which you can use to either spew wax at the Psycho or not. But continuing on in the game we go, you basically see me here taking full advantage of the psychologist. Now she goes towards this uh, pallet, do not drop it down so I can get a normal hit right here. And as you can see, Cypher stopped shaking. I did realize that but I kind of want to get an extra hit before going back. Locking the Cypher as well, now this is important because Cypher control is the most important thing in high tier. Because they can get the Cyphers relatively, they can get the Cyphers done relatively fast, like really really darn fast. Now then here as you can see Barmy going up towards the second story. I just decided to wait a little bit. Right, because Barmy slowly vaulted down. You can also hear her slowly fall down here. And if she goes between this pallet here, there's really nothing that they can do. So basically here, there's nothing they can do. Either they put down a pallet or they don't. And if they don't put down the pallet, you can just keep spewing wax. Make sure that they are they're actually quite a bit far away from the pallet so they can't come back and drop it back at you and locking the cypher here with acrobat now with the cypher machine progress it's only like the last cypher has not been started yet and acrobat cypher has been completely locked by me here as you can see locking the window so when acrobat goes up we can just go up immediately and see where he is because like the moment you go up the stairs you can see like if the survivors are on the other side of stairs or not and this is basically what i'm doing sees the acro it's the acro Acro has to go rescue here. If Acro doesn't go rescue, right, then it's kind of screwed. But also, I have detention. No, I have trump card for this one. So Acro get, got a little bit scared. He doesn't know whether I have teleport or or blink, which you know is not a bad choice, of course. Now Acro going up towards second stop. Um, I guess I do understand in this case scenario, because I'll just explain a little bit, right? Like Acro should not have down here. Acro should have just balled this direction and then keep containing but yeah i guess i guess it is what it is so like for those of you who main wax you can't think of, you can't like you know just think okay going to the pallet was it worth the risk or not you need to keep you need to keep the wax coming out though that's the most important thing now here as you can see priestess priestess is as the second stop up there uh i'll pause it here again in this case scenario in this case scenario Priestess is up here. She's definitely gonna portal down, right, to rescue. She's definitely gonna portal it down to rescue. Uh, so for like survivors, for survivors who are in lower tier, what you could do is force them to rescue. Because you can see here, Acro, 
Acro just barely reached on chair. So if you force the rescue, you're not wasting too much time. And if you're not wasting too much time, that means they can't get the cipher done. There's two ciphers remaining. Psychologist is at one. Priestess has to rescue. Now, in, and now here you don't really have to get an extra hit on Priestess because it doesn't really matter. Because as I've said as well, by this point in the game, I kind of realized I want to force Priestess to come down to rescue. Because Priestess doesn't have Tide anymore because she already re rescued um, Barmaid using a Tide. Now forcing the Priestess down here, this will be an immediate rescue. You get rid of the portal here first. I think getting rid of the portal is more important. And then you start spewing wax. It's okay here. It's okay here for you to keep spinning wax. See here, I'm not going through the pallet. I'm not going through the pallet. I'm not getting pallet stunned. I'm not going through the pallet. Aku is at 81 right now. I can just immediately hot wax him down. And this is going to be our pick and drop. See here, Cypher is definitely not done. Cypher is definitely not done. But that's gonna be the end of that's gonna be the end of the game one because we're not gonna go through end game at all. I don't think there's a need to go through end game. There's a perfect end game for with Anne that I played like a few games back. For this game, uh, I think we have two S badges in this game. Nonchance Thief is an S badge thief, and then I think the Toy Merchant is also an S badge. Now spawning in this location, survivors will always spawn here, right? I decided not to put the cat out first because. I wanted to use it here, knowing that I'm gonna go chase after Toy Merchant, because it is area spawn selection after all. Now, that cat landed, which is great. We did our jump, an immediate hit right here, which is great as well. Now, we could have bursted the cats, but I was like, nah, it's fine. It's genuinely, it's fine. Because Toy Merchant still has one catapult, so if you can just put it down, in all honesty. Okay, now in this situation, in this situation, we're playing it very safe. In this situation, we're playing it very safe. Now, they're falling through here. Now, the moment that this cat lands... Listen, right? The moment that this cat lands, you're gonna... S oh, oops. Wrong thing. Where's my pen? Oh, uh, give me a sec. Uh, you're gonna have to stay in this location. So, you're, so you're, so like, you're gonna walk around this location and you're gonna try force Toy Merchant not to go anywhere. If Toy Merchant places catapults down, that's fine. Your blink, you have still 20 seconds left in blink. But you still 20 seconds left in blink. So all in all, I think it's genuinely fine just for you to like suffocate her here a little bit. See my movement. Just suffocate her here a little bit. She didn't put the catapult down, which is grand for me. Because if she put she if she did put the catapult down, there's a chance that she could fly away based off my position. But like since my position was good, I can immediately jump towards her. And, like, it's a 50 second down, right? But here you can see three ciphers at 50%. It's not slow. It's really not slow. It's really not slow. There's also a prisoner out there as well, so we need to be very wary of this. Now, we can see Merc wanting to come in for rescue. Merc wanting to come in for rescue. Thief cipher is already 80%. Prisoner cipher is going relatively darn fast as well. Because, like, Prisoner is decoding not only Mercs, but also his own. So that's great. And, of course, Prisoner is in Factory. So you can't really chase after someone in Factory. All what you can really do here is if they know you, if you know that they're not rescuing, put out the cat, if it's after half, and then burst it. So then they, so then they can't decode anymore. From Prisoner's side, can't decode anymore. That's the cipher there. And then Mercenary come to rescue. Mercenary came to rescue at a good time. There was still 5 seconds left for my cat, but I was like, nah, not worth it. Let's just let's just get this done and over with. Now then throws the cat out. If he if she puts the pallet down, we can just blink down here immediately. Cause this is an after half, right? So you might as well use the blink. It is an after half. You might as well use the blink. Since that pallet has been placed down, it's gonna be harder for you to do anything. Now uh, I want you guys to focus here. Thief should not be here. Like like no no. Like Thief, Thief is not Thief is not good enough as a rebound Kai character. Thief is not like you're not a batter. You're not a batter. You're also not Ench. Who are you also not? You're also not forward. Right? And like the thing the thing with this is these guys usually bring flywheels, so even if you burst your cat, it's gonna be a little bit more scarier, which is why I still bring mischievous. Mischievous is absolutely divine against these guys. Absolutely divine. But yeah, I don't think the thief should have been there. I understand that the cipher isn't enough, but if the thief stays here to harass, then I'm just gonna get a free hit. 
But you just jump here and that's an immediate hit on Teeth. We also know where Teeth is. We also know where Teeth is, right? Which is why I put the cap back to like locate the Teeth. Okay, we know that Teeth is running trace towards the Christmas tree and the cipher there has just been popped. So it means that Mercy is also nearby. Uh, we only need to chase after one person here. There's two ciphers remaining, but we only need to chase after one person. I decide to go straight towards the cipher first. <laughs> Seeing that Teeth is here, that's fine. The cat didn't land, that's also fine. But we're gonna bring the cat back here and then jump. Really nice jump, put it back then. I think that I think I think like that's also that's also the problem with this location when you're kiting Ann. Because Ann can just put out the cats in this location and then when your cats go separate directions, right? The survivor, like this is the only place where there's a pallet for you to transition away. So if you don't have pallet speed boost, or if you uh, like if, even if you put this pallet down, the cat's gonna land on you and the ant can just immediately jump towards you in this direction or from here on in. So it's a bit of an oof moment for survivor mains in this area, but they should have healed. I still think they should have healed, or you and Teeth shouldn't just have come in general. Now they're missing one full cipher, and we can see as well the cipher in Shaq is shaking. So we know that as well. So in this situation, basically what you're doing is you put the cats out and you see where the survivors are. In a nutshell, yes, in a nutshell. Now see here, we, we, we're gonna go for prisoner first. We're gonna go for prisoner first. We're gonna hit we're gonna get the hit on Prizzy. Why does that matter, you might think? This matters because you don't wanna hit the merc, right? You know that the Merc is gonna like if the Merc like the Merc is gonna come rescue anyways at the end of the day. He's gonna come rescue anyways. But there's a but like if the prisoner comes rescue, he can do a no he can he, he can definitely get pull the rescue off. Because like the moment Anne puts her cat out, prisoner can just stun the Anne. Right? The moment that prisoner stuns the Anne, he gets onto the cat and then he gets the stun before Anne gets the hit. This is high tier, so you can't really underestimate survivors that much, so it's best to get the hit on Prizzy there. Now then, Prizzy jumps down towards basement, we don't need to do anything, just put the box, cats back towards the <laughs> cypher so that he can't decode. Pop the cat there, Blink is ready in 12 seconds. And, like, you, you, you just don't follow, just don't follow here. Do you really, genuinely speaking, just don't follow here. Wait until your silence is gone, wait until your cat comes back. And if, if, and if Teeth gets greedy here, you can just hit him. But in general, you should just wait. If you're Anne against a Teeth, wait until your cat comes back. Right? If he stops flashing, walk towards him. If he starts fl flash, uh, flashing, walk back. And then put your cat out and then jump towards him. He can't do anything. Which I think is great. We have Blink as well though, so we could have just Blink him down there. But yeah, that's going to be the end of Game 2. Let's move on to Game 3. Game 3 will be a bit of pollen. Game 3 will be a bit of pollen. Sorry. Surprisingly, Pauline's back to meta now. Surprisingly, surprisingly, Pauline's back to meta now. But for this game in general, I think we chased after... I think we actually chased after a... Who again was it? I think we chased after a... Uh, forward. We chased after forward. So that first bike shouldn't have happened. But I guess it did happen just for the sake of it happening. But like here, as you can see, forward in here. Oh wait, oops, I didn't draw it properly. Sorry, I didn't draw that properly. But like forward going towards that pallet. That's great, puts the pallet down, I can immediately change back to wheel form. Because like, if you get a really early spike, you might as well change to human form and force the forward out of his ball. Right, For like we force like, how many ball? We force like, I think, a third of his ball. But, but like, in my mind, I was like, I probably forced a quarter of his ball. Just because, try not to underestimate survivors too much. And then forcing the ball up once again here as you can see his full ball is gone. From second stop to two story, just by the entrance of two story his full ball is gone. Now I decided not to chase after him here because there was a Prizzy. There was a Prizzy and his, like the way he moves here, it just means that you can get a hit here right. He, okay he basically did what he needed to do, puts that down, gets a normal hit right there as you can see. Now, uh, there's one extra thing to focus. If you look at the top right of my screen, right, like a few frames back, look at the top right of my screens, it says, it says there's two survivors nearby. Oh, oops. It did say that, it did say that there was two survivors nearby. 
and then it did say that there was tree survivors nearby so this is quite good sometimes because now we know that they're not decoding now we know that they're not decoding which is great for me now putting the prisoner down immediately right here as you can see they're actually not decoding because presets we did come to give support portals forward is here so what you do here is try force forward to rescue basically what i did was i immediately placed a trap down and I wanted to land a spike on him. I did right there, but the trap disappeared, so I guess that's just a me wheel problem. Uh, Forward got a no damage rescue. It's fair, but he did rescue pretty darn early. We still have blink as well, so that's fine. We still have blink as well, so that's fine. Uh, he's not able to get anywhere here, sadly. Wouldn't be able to get anywhere here, sadly. Now, gets the hit right there. We're missing one more hit to phase two. Forward is at max. Oh, no, Forward has two spikes, but Priestess is... They're, they're, they're just not decoding. I feel like Priestess probably should just decode instead of removing the spikes for forward. Because forward can do that himself. Forward decodes slow anyway, so it doesn't matter at the end of the day. And forward is going to come rescue. Now, Priestess having two portals. This is very important. Priestess having two. Oh, yeah, do, do, do remind. Or I do need to remind everyone that this may be like high tier. I'm going against S badges. I'm not using my main. But this is like randoms. This is randoms. Like, there's only two duos here. There's only two duos here, so like there's not perfect communication at the end of the day. Then the forward getting the no damage rescue. Prisoner actually did pretty well right here. He did pre do pretty well right here. I tried mind game a little bit. I wanted to blink the hit, but he immediately stopped him there. Very nicely done by Prizzy. But Flywheel not ready. So that's an immediate down right there. Now, forward is looking for an item right here. Priestess wants to heal the forward. Yeah, Priestess wants to heal the forward. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. That's always a good sign. That is always a good sign, honestly. Now here, as you can see... Oh. Oh. <laughs> now here, as you can see, we got the spike on Priestess, but, but like, I get, I, forward, forward just looks better. Forward just looks better. But it seems like Priestess also came on Tram, surprisingly. So... They went down. They they did went down. I got a little bit annoyed at that. Oh, I missed I missed it there. I got a panic a little bit. Missed it there. Mm, going back up towards two. You probably should change forms here. But I got a little bit greedy, saying I kind of want to land a spike on them, which, which is what I did. Uh, break the, the don't take the portal there. Genuinely speaking, don't take the portal there. If they go up here, they have a five second thingy. I decided to play it more safe. I didn't want to hit the priestess. Because, like, if forward got out of the tram, then that means Priestess can also get out of the tram. So Priestess can bait me with that hit and forward can successfully go down, which is why I played it more safe right there. Um, you see, when survivors go on tram, there's a 5 second cooldown of leaving the tram. So, like, which is why, you know, it's a bit important to know that. Now then, cheering the forward right here. Now, this is the very important part. Wait, this is the very important part. So there is a... There's this girl here, decoding. And this is probably a new cipher. When I was when I was playing the game, when I was in the game, I was like, it's just a new cipher. I'm not sure. So in this situation, I immediately changed to peepers. As you can see on our bottom our bottom right, I immediately changed to peepers. Got a little bit scared right there. Now Priestess is here, Ento is here. Now both of them are trying to open that cipher. Not a good thing. Not a good thing. But like the most the the, the main important part here is we're gonna try land the hit on Priestess. Right, and let Ento get the rescue. I guess we didn't. We're gonna land the hit on Ento first. And then let Forward be rescued. But you see, in this situation, in this situation, Priestess is still decoding. And then we've two survivors at half health. So what we wanna do is we wanna get Priestess on chair. So Priestess. Priestess needs to be on chair. Priestess needs to be on chair. So then like forward and cycle can come rescue. As you can see, forward half health, cycle. No, not cycle, ento half health. Which I think is great. Now then uh I decided to bait. This is called baiting. Because if priestess comes back here, then that means we can try land some spikes on priestess. Uh, I played it more safe, I think. I played it more safe. I decided to land three spikes on priestess. She did fly with that one though, so well played to her on that part. Uh, a little bit unfortunate here. The trap. Did get the hit. Now, problem numero uno. Forward half health, ento half health. And if we see on forward's perspective, he is currently running towards the cypher. So cypher machine wasn't done. It's not done. It's not enough. Right? And like, ento has max bees. Ento 
Mm, could look for a. Uh, oh, yeah. Look here. Look here. Look here. If you saw on the ground there, there was blueprints. Half health survival will reveal blueprints. Even if they have quiet footsteps, even if there's no blood trails, there'll be blue blueprints. Which is why I knew where Psycho was. Not Psycho. Why am I keep saying Ento as Psycho? Which is why I know where Ento was. So that's great. Now, in this situation, you shouldn't be too greedy. In this situation, you shouldn't be too greedy. First thing you need to do is get rid of the bees. As long as the bees is gone, Ento doesn't counter. Ento doesn't counter wheel anymore. Because when Ento's on bees, slow trap doesn't really work on her. Like the stone trap does work, but the slow trap doesn't. But yeah, this is another win. And then let's move on to a end game. End game mindset. End game mindset. Which this with this an. I think this was another. I don't think there was any S badges here. But let's move on to an endgame an. So you see, uh, I'm just gonna check where they spawn. Ench here, Mercy here. Prisoner actually spawns here surprisingly. And Ento near towards middle. Okay, near towards middle shack. Now I've decided to put the cat out here immediately because it's a prisoner, right? Prisoner has no items. And if we can't find prisoner, I saw the bullet tracer, him running there, so it doesn't really matter. So if we can't find prisoner, then yeah, Ufus, Ufus, man. So I know that Merc is here. Now this is something we need to keep in mind. See here, see here, see here, see here. This is a this is a good trick for you to use in any tier. So you are a hunter and you're looking at this direction. So that means red light is at this direction. Merc is here. Merc is trying to keep track of the red light. Merc thinks that red light is actually here. So what did I do? I just stood here. And I immediately turned back. To hit the, the Merc. What you could do here is a charged attack and then try to hit the Merc. But I guess I just played it a little bit more amateurly. But here as you can see, immediately pop the cat. You need to immediately pop the cat after jumping. It's it's I, th I think it's a rule of thumb. If you can't get the stun, immediately pop the cat after jump. Now this this is a great place because you need to you need you definitely need to break this pallet. You need to break this pallet as an. And you also need to break this pallet as an. Because it's really hard to land. It's genuinely really hard to land. This landed, I'm surprised. This landed, I'm surprised. Basically flying cats. A lot of the cat streams, they all love to fly. Now then getting the hit on Mercy here as you can see, Blink has not been used, but Blink is up and ready to go. Cypher Cypher isn't enough, but like prisoner is decoding here. Oh no, that's the Ench, never mind. Cypher isn't enough, but there's still an Ench on the field. Now, I'm surprised that Prisoner ran back out and leaving Ench to decoding Factory. Because I feel like if Prisoner decoding Factory, it would have been a little bit safer. But if Prisoner decides to stay here, that's fine. So we throw the cats out immediately. Doesn't matter if the cats hit or not, but apparently we did explode onto them, so that's fine. Uh, we decided to throw out the cats a little bit early on, just so like, you know... I think we can force. I, I forced the edge to rescue here. It didn't really matter to me. Just forced the edge to rescue. Prisoner came. Je ne sais pas pourquoi. But uh, I don't. Did I land the cat there? Ah, uh, ah, oh, right. This is this is really well done by the Ento. I decided to change targets. I decided to change targets. I, I didn't have I didn't have the jump so, which is why I bursted the cat out instead. That is very nicely done by the by the. <laughs> By the Ento, honestly. Because if Ento, if Ento's speed wasn't there, then Mercy definitely would have went bye bye. Mercy definitely would have been hitted. Oh, you're on your own from Prisity. Well, very well played. Uh, I knew that Merc was somewhere here, right? But I don't think I saw Prisoner. So Prisoner got definitely got the backdoor rescue. Prisoner definitely got the backdoor rescue. I didn't see Prisoner, sadly. I want to go after Merc. I think I was way prioritizing way more on Merc. Didn't get the hit right there, sadly. Blinked hit! Ah, oh, I didn't get the blink hit as well! Ah, oh, I didn't get the blink hit! Oh, I did get the blink hit, okay. That was a shocker. That was a shocker. That was a shocker. That was genuinely speaking a shocker. Now, problem, Ench. Next problem, Merc. Ench has two stacks. Ench is being healed. What does that mean? Ench will have three stacks when I see Merc. It's like, oh, uh, Ento's bees are here as well, so it's a bit annoying. But, like, as you can see, after all the fighting, they're not really missing that much cipher. Like, they're missing three for ciphers. Fair. But like, with Ench, and with me not being able to fight Merc right now, with Ench, what does that mean? Ench is able to rebound Kite. Ench is able to help, like, if Ench stuns Merc down once with like a small curse, that's a 50 second free tie tie. So as you can see, it's really annoying for me. And we, I, I, also did, I also didn't know that what Ench had. I don't know if Ench had window speed boost or 
flywheel there, but I did see Ench coming in. I did want to force the early rescue, but I was like, I want, but I was like, I want to try to go for a chair, like a chair camp, just because it's probably safer for me. Uh, at the bees, I hit the chair, and of course the bees come me in. The bees come me and hurt it the most, I think. So it's very well done by Ento right here. Very, very well done by Ento right here. I should have hit the bees, but it's very well done by Ento. Uh, here I'm just being a little bit dumb. Like, we all make mistakes, but so, like, this is my biggest mistake. I should have jumped. I have double jump. I should have jumped and stunned them both. But I didn't do that. I got stuck here. I, I should have jumped again. I didn't jump. Why did I not jump? But the cats are gone now. Uh, there you have it. Three stacks inch. Crying internally and externally. Basically, sees a prisoner here. I... Oh, okay. Thank God. Thank God. Prisoner electrocuted first before inch is stunned. Or else that would have been really bad. Or else that would have been really bad, honestly. I'm trying to get the hit on Prizzy here. But here as you can see, Ench is a huge menace. Gets the hurt, a hit on Mercy, not Prizzy. Gets the hit on Mercy. Ench has another stack ready. Ah, this is scary. They're missing one Cypher. See how fast the Cypher is going. This is the only Cypher left. They're really only missing one Cypher. So in height here, if they fight, I will, I will post another video as well of a batter. Of a batter. There's this one batter that kept harassing without decoding for an Ento. Ento didn't kite long early game. Ento kited 40 seconds and they only need one Cypher remaining by the time I checked Ento. That's how annoying it is. Now the Cypher's popped. Now this is the most important thing. This is the most important thing. I saw red footprints. I saw that someone was here. So basically what happens here is I know the Ench is up here. So this is very important to know. When you're playing, when you're playing camp, when you're playing camp in general. Oh wait, oops. When you're playing camp in general, you see the red footprints. You know that someone is here. So what you want to do is throw the cats out, see who's here, and then jump towards this direction. So that's what we're gonna do here. So you jump towards, you see Ent, you see Ent here, jump towards the direction, that's why you have another jump. You're gonna jump again, jump towards the direction. The pilot hit there was great. Now this is the most important part. This is the most important part. Don't chair. Ent, Ent heal slow. Don't chair, don't chair, don't chair, don't chair. Uh, I'll wait. Don't chair. So you see prisoner, like you're gonna run towards the other gate first. Your cats are ready, so you're gonna. You can, this is how you're gonna cut. You're gonna cut up this way, right? You're gonna cut this way, and then it's gonna split into these two directions. You should never cut this way and then split up here. Now you may you may wonder why. Like, oh, Kuro, it's probably better for me to do it that way because I can jump immediately. No, you want to land the cat on the survivor and stun the survivor. Don't always rely on your cross. Like, like, no, don't always rely on your cross. I think that's a bad practice. Cause, Cause like, if it's your cross, like, even if the cats are really darn big, the radius is really darn big, sometimes it just won't land. It generally sometimes just won't land. So the safest way, really, the safest approach, really, put your cat out this way and then let it split into these two directions. And then use your cross. Cause like, you're going in this direction anyways. So then if you use your cross, like, you're not moving, like, your cross is here. It's not that much of a, of a big distance, right? Compared to like if you do if you did your cats this way if you did your cats this way up here and then survivor runs towards this direction you have to put your cross like all the way out here now that's an even bigger distance and then it allows survivors to escape the cat radius <laughs> to escape the nekochi <laughs> now then we see the prisoner here so here as you can see I played it more safe put the cat out did that get the stun uh, I I could have blinked down but I was like nah let's save it. Get the hit then right there. Now Ench is still healing. That's fine. Ento is somewhere. 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 Uh, we see the Ento here. So that's a good sign for us. Because like our cat is ready. And our blink is ready. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm baiting the Ento in thinking that I'm actually going towards the Ench. In which I'm not. And there goes the Ento. Uh, Ench got up. That's fine. Ento. Like I basically picked Ento up here to put Ento near chair. But you probably shouldn't do it, because Ench has stacks of curses. <laughs> Ento wants to crawl away, so she's not healing. I think that's a good thing, in my opinion. Uh, I missed the cats, I think. Oh no, I didn't. Oh yeah, she. I should have blinked here. I forgot I had a blink. I genuinely forgot I had a blink. Burst the cat. No, I didn't burst the cat. Okay, that's fine. I didn't burst the cat. I decided to jump back immediately. And then look for Ento. Because so, Ento crawled away, and then Ento's healing. If Ento managed to heal pump time, I can blink her down. I guess I played it more safe here, but this is a really good endgame for me. Turned a 
<laughs> tie into a win or even a losing to a win to a certain extent because they almost got the site they, they, they genuinely almost got a cypher done you saw you saw enchantress basically forced healing the merc oh that was scary oh that was scary imagine if she has still had one curse right there oh that is scary really scary then moving on to our last game i don't think i've any sculptor games recorded to be fair with you Now then, moving on to the last game. This is Wheel in... This is Wheel in Lakeside. So for Wheel in Lakeside, you usually want to bring... Um, some people prefer to bring Insolence along with Confined. I also do like this as well because there's a lot of windows and it's too hard to deal with. And there are pallets and it's too hard to deal with. So basically, a response selection again. Me looking for the Composer. Uh... This is great and all. We managed to land... Oh, we didn't land one there because I wasn't close to the wall enough. Basically, I'm not hugging the wall close enough. If you hug, hug the wall close enough, you'll basically get that. Now, here's the thing, right? I didn't want to change forms here because this is a very strong containment area. So, like, I don't think there was a point in changing forms here. If, if it was, like, an open area or, like, a, a kiting area with, like, one pallet or one window, which is relatively far away from each other, I think it's fine. But for me, this 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 area, you have two pallets and one window that are really close towards each other. So like, it's really easy for you to kite. That's what I think. Now, vaults over here, I didn't really get this. My, my, my trap didn't really land. But here, as you can see, that didn't go through as well. A little bit sad. Oh, decided not to blink here. Decided not to blink here. He still has his, like, this is the thing, right? Compo like, Composer may have a 50 second CD. May have a 50 second cooldown with um, his tuning. But one tuning is basically one skill. What does that mean? One tuning is one mirror for Mary. One tuning is one blink for every hunter. So if he manages to tune you while you blink, you're screwed. You're genuinely screwed. So you have to be very careful there. You have to be very careful there. Because he does move like really fast. Now then, once it order on the mercenary, you see mercenary coming in. I basically just yolo here. Gets the one spike, sees the little girl, wants to force the little girl away from the cypher, but apparently the cypher was almost done. That's great. That's a bit sad. Now then, that's the first elbow pad coming from the mercy. Uh, I got lucky with stopping that elbow pad. I got really lucky with stopping that elbow pad. I think this was an after half. This probably was an after half. Oh, I decided to snap here. Ah, I decided to snap here. Now, the reason why I snapped there was because I thought Mercy was gonna, like, immediately touch the chair. So I snapped first. But if Mercy gives me a free hit right there, it's fine as well. It's fine as well. It's fine as well. We're gonna change straight into Wheel from to look for the... The, 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 the Composer. So now it's a double down situation. It still worked it. But I guess we could have gained more. We could have gained more by the after half rescue. Maybe a little bit more mind game right there. But you know what? It's fine. We're, we want to play a little bit more safe since it is high tier. Playing it safe is fine. Getting it high is fine. Especially with hunters you don't main. And then changing straight towards wheel form. I decided to go after the little girl. Because I know that prisoner is in big bulk. Because the cypher still isn't done right. So he can't really make it to me on time. Now knows that the little girl is right here. Decides to go after the little girl immediately. Oh, we do see that the prisoner is on his way to rescue, but like he's not going to be able to make it because it is Big Bull. It is Big Bull. Unless he leaves immediately, that he probably would, but this is Big Bull. So you can't be too sure. Honestly, can't be too sure. Now, I decided to change to wheel for, uh, change the human form right here because I know that little girl doesn't have... Oh, I got that. Because I know that little girl doesn't have a uh, flywheel. Oh, he, she managed... You know what? That's something all little girl means can learn. But like, she did manage to... Uh, she did get the window speed boost when she vaulted, which is why I was like, yeah, she doesn't have flywheel. I mean, they changed right there. I think it's to play a little bit more safe after flywheel came out. And then with two ciphers <laughs> remaining, Mercy is being healed because Mercy has come rescued. This cipher is almost done. It's at half right now. I decided, I genuinely decided, I don't think I changed to peepers here. Because, like, in a big map like this... Where, where like it takes a while for you to go from one gate to another. I, I, I prefer teleport sometimes, but Peeper is fine if you want to keep like control of the, of the ciphers. Now then, I know that Mercy's here, but I also know that Prisoner is going to rescue. Because if Mercy is not going, is not able padding towards the chair, then Prisoner is, which is what we're doing right now. So immediately do that. We got an immediate hit right here. That's fine. I got a little bit scared there. If I throw the trap out and I and like he managed to rescue, no problem. I kind of got scared there. 
No, then did manage to bait it a little bit. Oh, I missed a blink. Ugh. I missed like three blinks this session. It's not good at all. It's not good at all. Uh, vaulting here. I think I did. Yeah, I did get a hit vaulting here, which is very nice. Now, prisoner is nearby. We don't chair immediately. We immediately change forms and get the prisoner down. I think getting prisoner down is more important than most of the stuff. He has no electrocute left as well, so he can't really stop our stuff. Uh, I played it more safe. I played it more safe, just in case of flywheel, I snap. So like, in case they have flywheel, if you're near towards them, you snap and then they flywheel and then you hit them. I think that is a good rule of thumb to use. But of course, in lower tiers, you don't really use flywheel that much, so you can just basically snap. And then chairing the little girl, prisoners are prisoners on chair as well. So Mercy has to rescue both of them, which is great. Which is great. Uh, I think I focus more on Mercy here because the little girl was almost dead, right? So basically, what I did is one, and then we're gonna get the we're gonna get three spikes here. We're gonna get three spikes here. We're gonna get three spikes here. So whoever I hit, oh well, whoever I hit goes in immediately. Didn't really rescue fast enough there, but a prisoner a prisoner has electric here. Oh well. A little bit slow right there. Oh well, downs immediately. Well, I didn't draw too much here, but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm, this will be the end of today's video. It, sorry, it has been a while. It, has, it really has been a while since like I've actually commented my own videos and then explained to you my mindset in higher tiers. Hopefully, this helped you out a little bit. I did play like Anne. Anne is like a universal hunter for everyone. But then Paloon and then Wax is just like a little bit more harder hunters. But yeah, that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, sorry for... I probably should do this like a little bit more often. Just so I can be like interacting with my viewers a little bit more. With my sugar buns a little bit more. But yeah, that'll be the end of today. Hopefully you learned something new. And I will see you all tomorrow. Or Thursday for a stream. But bye bye for now. Have a good day, good night.